Oh, hey y'all, Matt here, Craft a Branch Homestead. Uh, thanks for joining us today. So today we're going to do a short little video, uh, thanks to a subscriber's question there, on what I do about the quail feeders. Alright, so as I said, um, I got a, a question from a subscriber on what I do about the quail feeders, specifically because quail are very messy. Uh, you think chickens are messy. These guys, uh, they, they grab their food, they shake it, they throw it around, and they will waste a ton. So there's a few things I do um, to keep my quails fed. So when they were young and they were in the brooders, I used some small ones like this. And until I kind of got a system going, I kind of continued to use these a little bit. These are not great. Um, if you fill them lower, they work fine because they can't throw it out quite as much, but you will still lose a lot. Uh, another ones are kind of like these. You can find these everywhere. These do not work well at all. The quail will throw half or more of this out and you will lose it. Um, I've taken the two different things that actually work really well for me. And so I'll, I'll show those and then I just kind of want to show the concept a little bit. So uh, what you're looking for. There's not a lot in quail feeders on the market. There are a few and you can find them. And once you know the concepts behind what you're looking for really, um, it's easier to find. So one thing I do, kind of off topic a little bit, um, but I do fill these bottles up with my quail feed ahead of time. Now right now, um, as with everything we do on this channel and with what I'm doing in life, I strive for more self-sufficiency and sustain sustainability. Um, and so really buying this quail feed is not the best for me. And I'm currently doing a ton of research on what grains I need to grow and proteins I need to use in order to um, feed the quail and, and get the needs they have. Anyways, with that said, for now, I'm using these bottles. And so the quail feed will have a lot of dust or small parts that I find the quail really don't eat. There are some things you can do with that, but uh, the bottle does help because I can shake it and a lot of that will fall to the bottom. Um, now when I use these, I will take them and with these two quail feeders I have up top here, let me get the camera stable, that I have okay, built. So with these two quail feeders I have built in here that I'm going to show now, they do have two little pipes and there's one back here. You'll have to excuse the wiring, I do need to put a, a wire. Anyway, there's these two pipes that stick up. Now, something I do want to add, because right now with the system, it allows them about two days worth of food. I do want to add something like a bottle on top that's not going to move, and I can cut the top off and, and give them a few more days worth of food. That is something to come. For now, this is what I do. Now, uh, my top two cages, I, I use the layer mix. And in a, another video, if someone likes, I can go into what I feed them and how I mix it. But with this one, what I can do is just dump it down and fill up that tube. I'm not going to do that because I am going to show you this contraption here. Okay, so I have two different heights. This one's a little bit smaller. This one's a little bit taller back there. Uh, I was trying things out and as I do with everything, I like to try a couple different things and see what works best. I do like the taller one best. Um, the birds they don't really fly, they're glorified jumpers, but uh, they like to get up on top of things. So the taller one works a little bit better. They can't get up on top of it quite as well as this lower one here. So I do suggest going with the larger one. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull this out so we can see. So I've just cut a hole up in the top of the wire that the pipe goes through. Might lose some grains doing this, but that's all right. Okay. Shut that so they don't escape. Okay. For this one, what I've done is I've gone to the dollar store and I've just purchased one of these containers. Uh, I'm not sure how big it is. Let's see. It looks like three quart container uh, from the dollar store uh, for a, do a dollar. I then want to, to drill one and a half inch holes. This is big enough for their head to go through. I also sanded down a little bit and made sure there's no little plastic pieces. The quails will eat all of that and I don't want that in my food. I also don't want them cutting their necks. So in this one here, I was able to drill one, two, three, four, five of these holes. In their cage, there's about a dozen birds. This works just fine. Uh, for that many birds. I've then 
gone ahead and I didn't have a drill bit big enough so what I did was drilled a small hole and then took my wire cutters and just cut the hole that I traced out. Uh, I set this on top and traced around it. Anyways, I cut that hole out in the lid. I did put it towards the back here so that way this pole will fall right into this back groove behind the handle. So I screwed the lid on first and drew that circle so I know right where it would land. I went to the hardware store and I got some of this PVC pipe. I believe it was, uh, it was probably seven or eight dollars for a large piece that I was able to cut. Um, and this is a two inch piece and so I got that and so this slides right down in here now this gets into the concept or what you're looking for a little bit when you're gonna either build or buy a quail feeder and that is a couple things one the height of the holes I put this three inches up from the bottom I also screwed this one and a half or this two by four uh, block on the bottom to raise it up this requires the birds to have to, to stretch their neck up and then in in order to get the food now this isn't a good example I've been messing with it so the foods a lot higher than it would be but you want to keep this food level pretty low in the bottom here so they'll have to reach down to grab it and when they throw it it won't uh, go out as much as possible so to do that when we put this pipe in the height you want to put it is quite a bit lower than these holes at the bottom. And at first I thought, how can that possibly let enough food out? But as long as it's up off the bottom a little bit, it will spill out and they will reach in and pull it out all the way. So when you push this pipe in, push it to almost the bottom. And so it's a little higher right now than I need because the food is all falling down. Uh, but that's what we're going to do. And so what I did was I went ahead and cut a little hole in the top of the wire mesh of their cage. And then I can easily, they are eager to get this feeder back. There we go. I can just put this in here, push it up through this hole. And make sure I don't squish any of my little quail here. Out of the way, guys. And I'll turn it so all the holes are facing out. That allows more of them to eat at a time. They will get stuck behind things, so I like to keep it uh, so they can kind of get around it. Otherwise, they'll get stuck and push it out. Now, this feed is a whole lot higher than it needs to be. But you can see here by her eating there uh, and get the point a little bit. Hi, Lily. She's always up here to see me. She's really sweet. We'll put her up here for a moment. Here you go, Lily. All right. And so all the quail are really skittish, but her. Anyways, this one shows the level more so where it should be at. And I'll try and get a good shot of that. Let's see what this other camera here. Camera here. There we go, so you can see it should be pretty low. This one might even be a little bit high. But with that, they cannot throw a lot out. By far, these are probably my favorite feeders for the top. I can fill them pretty easily. They do hold quite a bit of food in the bottom there. Um, and I really like them. Okay, Lily, we'll put you back now. <laughs> Say hi. There we go. The second feeders I have that I'm using, I really like these as well. And I use these on the bottom cages where the roos are. It's a little bit harder to get down there because they are low. Um, but you can see them, they hang on the outside. These are extremely easy to uh, fill up. I just opened the lid and I can fill them. They're clear so you can see right through them. You might see his little head popping out there. They love these as well. Now these don't work quite as well as the one I built. Um, the feed in here again is a little too high as well. And I'll show you in the other one why that is. But <laughs> he's pecking my finger. Ah! Ah! Um, so they will peck out and they'll get their feed. They are still able to pull some of this back in and throw it out. I do notice more loss with these, uh, especially when it's higher. So if, and they don't hold as much. They need to be filled every day. Uh, these, they work great. But again, I use them for the ruse because I, I need to thin these out, but I plan on only having two or three roosters in here about at a time. Um, so that would be perfect for them. This one I got off Amazon, I believe came from Coops or more. And it just hangs on the outside of the wire here. And so what I did was I took it, I clipped out the holes just big enough to hang the little clips and then cut around here to cut the wire out. And, and their feathers protect their heads. They're just fine. They can reach in there. This other one here on the other root cage is same design. Uh, this one I got from Wynola Ranch. I like this one better a little bit more because of the clips and I'll show you those. But we hung it the same way. And again, I need to thin the ruse out in this cage as well. Um, hi guys, but it would fit uh, pretty well. So this one has these little clips that can turn. So I do prefer this one. Um, either way though, they work out well. 
So one thing with these feeders and all of them actually you'll need to take out and clean every now and then is they will get that crumble or that powder I was talking about in there. Um, and that'll fill it up and then when you're putting, they won't really eat it. So when you're putting the new food on there, um, it, it just raises the level of the food and they need it more often basically. So I take this off about once a week and I'll take these other bigger ones out about once a week and I dump the food out and all that powder. I am saving this for now. Uh, I have some ideas to make it into some cakes or treats maybe. Maybe the chickens will eat it as a higher protein treat. Uh, but anyways, I'm saving that for now. And then I can just go ahead and put the feeder back on. Again, this Guinola Ranch one turns and so that does make it easier to put it on. Uh, there we go. And I'll grab my feed. The roos get the 30% still to keep them nice and big and fat. They don't need as much calcium, so I can put that down at a slightly lower level, and uh, that way they can't waste as much. So hopefully some of this helps out the subscriber there who had some questions. If it doesn't answer all those, let me know, and I'll go ahead and try to address some of those. All right, well that's my little quick video on the quail feeders. The no-mass quail feeders are what I use to feed them and try and keep that waste down and cost down. So, uh, if you uh, like this video, go ahead and subscribe. If you haven't, give me a thumbs up, comments, all that helps as I'm trying to grow this channel, get some information I have out there that others may enjoy. Thank you very much. Stay strong.